All right, so in these files this week, I'm going to cover again um, some things about transforming. All right, I, I think it's important for us to keep kind of going back to some of the basics and then um, uh, basically make them slightly more complex, right, just to remind you how to do this stuff. So what I want you to do on this first file is take this box plane. You're going to make multiple copies of this layer, and I want you to show me two boxes, uh, one above and one below the horizon line in one point perspective. Okay. If you have taken a drawing class, you should be familiar with one point perspective. Um, just as a quick refresher, um, the first thing we're going to do is put on a horizon line. Okay. The horizon line is essentially where the earth and the sky meet. All right. So if you've ever been to the ocean and gone and looked out over the ocean, the horizon line is very clear because there's nothing blocking your view. The horizon line is also the um, same as the eye level of the person recording it. Okay, so if you stand up and you sit down, the horizon line is going to change for you. Okay, um, let me just point out very briefly here with one uh, one point two point uh, perspective that they are Western inventions. Okay, um, if you are going to make some things in Photoshop or make them digitally and you want them all to seem like they fit together, okay, there is a set um, standard of rules that have been developed over the centuries to trick people into thinking that there's depth where none exists. Okay, you are looking at, as you're watching this video, on a almost perfectly flat surface, right, with almost no depth whatsoever. Okay, I'm about as much as is physically possible. All right, we're going to make something look like it has depth. Okay, um, that's impossible, so it's a lie. Now, uh, other cultures have developed other ways of um, indicating depth on a, on a picture plane. Okay, um, some are by a hierarchy of the size of things. Okay, uh, some um, right by if it's up at the top, it represents something that's further away of the picture plane. If at the bottom, it's supposed to be closer. Okay, I'm not speaking to the superiority of any of those. Only that this is the Western system. Okay. So on your horizon line, you need to have a vanishing point. So for one point perspective, think about the idea of looking down a long hallway. Okay, that would be a one point perspective. So on my horizon line, I'm going to go ahead, um, make a new layer above it. I am going to go ahead and make an elliptical marquee, very small. Okay, and I'm going to fill it with a red. Okay, and then. I'm going to place this on my horizon line. Okay. Now at this point, anything, any parallel lines that are receding in space okay, need to come okay, to this line and to this point. So um, let me just demonstrate really quickly. I'm going to make a copy of the box plane. Okay. Pull it out. There we go. Photoshop is running real slow today for me today. Um, I'm going to pretend this is the side plane, okay? So uh, the way I want to go ahead and lay this out is uh, the line tool is the easiest way to do this. There are other ways to do this, uh, but the line tool for me is the easiest. It, it, the line tool creates a vector object, okay? So it's easy to, to turn off and ignore. So I'm going to pull a line out from here. And by the way, when you do this, you have to click off of it. It's kind of annoying, and then go back to it. So um, now my fill is set to red, okay? Um, so it's making a red line. That doesn't matter to me. If you want to change it, you can change your fill up here, or you can change the stroke. You can change the size of the stroke. That's not important right now, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. And I'm going to pull a second one out like this, okay? Now I have two lines that are going towards my horizon um, and towards my vanishing point. Okay, So I'm going to take my copy here and move it over. Um, I'm going to make the box long, so I'm actually going to rotate this. Now, in one point perspective, okay, all horizontal lines um, are going towards, that are receding from the viewer, are going towards the vanishing point. Um, all the horizontal lines that are not going not uh, receding from the view are going to be perfectly straight and all vertical lines will be perfectly straight. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull out a couple of guides. Okay. So essentially what we're looking at right here is the side of my box. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and rotate this first. Okay. 
Okay, pull it over. It's helpful now at this point to zoom in. Okay, and I'm going to hold down Command or Control, and I'm just going to pull these points onto the corners. of my picture plane here. So I'm going to follow this. And hit return to go ahead and apply that. Okay. So now I have the side of my box. All right, I'll make a copy of this. Now what I want to do is go ahead and make this the front of the box. So I can either, um, it doesn't really matter, I can either rotate this or I can Command T. And as it's Photoshop is having some real issues today here. I'm going to pull this up. There we go, come on. Okay, until it meets this corner, hit return and apply. That is my front plane. Okay. Now this bottom plane here, I'm going to go ahead and pull over. Now here's where, um, and here's what you may want to do, okay, because it helps. I'm going to change the color of these. Okay. So that is currently my my baby poop color. I'm going to go ahead and lock the transparent pixels. I'm going to make the side of the box a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to make sure I select what I'm going to make my the bottom of my box, right? I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and make this a little bit darker. Okay, make sure you lock the transparent pixels first. Okay. Now I'm going to take the bottom of this box, and here's what I want to do. I want to, again, make this in perspective. So what I'm going to need to do is pull another line. Okay, but in this case, I'm going to go from the corner of this box to my vanishing point. Okay. Now, um, since this line down here, okay, this horizontal line is not receding from the viewer, it's going to be perfectly straight, so I'm just going to pull a guide right to there. And this will tell me what the bottom of my box should look like. Okay. So again, uh, Command T, pull this into perspective. Very, very slowly here. I hope yours runs a little bit better than mine. I don't know what, I don't know if I need to have an update or what. Uh, normally this machine does not creak and groan like this. Okay. There we go, and I'm going to hit return to apply it. Now if I turn off my guides, okay, and if I hide my line layers, okay, I now have a box in 3D floating in space. Okay. I can do this anywhere okay, on this uh, field. I can do it directly above, to the right. Okay. So what I want you to do is go ahead and make a box. Okay, you don't have to make it as long as this. You can make it more of a, um, a cube. Okay, do one above the horizon line and one below the horizon line, right, using those techniques that I showed you. Here's the other thing. Once I have um, transformed this, you'll notice a lot of times it's just slightly off. Okay, and that's fine. What I want to do is um, nudge everything into place. Okay, so I will do transform at that point. And a lot of times you just have to kind of very subtly, there we go, pull it into place. And that's better. Okay. All right, so go ahead and make a box above, one below. Try and make them as nice as possible. Um, I would refine this a little bit more than what I currently have here. I take another five, 10 minutes. Okay. Um, and that is your first file for this week.